Hey, this is a sound check for AL.com. Please let me know if you can hear this. Thanks. Well, good morning, y'all, and thank you so much for being here. Dr. Harris and I are here today to provide the people of Alabama with an update uh, on the progress that we've made in reducing the spread of COVID-19, as well as to discuss vaccine distribution in our state. As of Tuesday, Alabama's seven-day average for new COVID-19 cases was 778 per day. You know, that's an 82% drop from the high reached on January 10th and the lowest average for daily new cases since late June. Also, the seven-day average number of COVID-19 patients in Alabama hospitals was 686, a 77% drop from the high reached on January the 11th and the lowest average number of COVID patients in Alabama hospitals since June 29 of last year. Y'all, we are definitely uh, indication that we are moving in the right direction. And I certainly want to thank the people of Alabama once again for their tremendous help and support to get us where we are. Even with this positive news, however, Dr. Harris and I are both convinced that we need to get past Easter and hopefully allow more Alabamians to get their first shot before we take a step some other states have taken to remove the mask order altogether and lift other restrictions. Folks, we're not there yet, but goodness knows we're getting closer. <clears throat> Our new modified order will include several changes that will ease up some of our current restrictions while keeping our mask order in place for another five weeks through April 9. But let me be abundantly clear, after April the 9th, I will not keep the mask order in effect. Now there's no question that wearing masks has been one of our greatest tools in combating the spread of the virus. 
That along with practicing good hygiene and social distancing has helped us keep more people from getting sick or worse, dying. And when we, even, even when we lift the mask order, I will continue to wear my mask while I'm around others and strongly urge my fellow citizens to use common sense and do the same thing. But at, the same, but at that time, it will become a matter of personal responsibility and not a government mandate. If businesses believe wearing masks are important to keeping their doors open and their employees and customers safe, and y'all many do, then they'll have five weeks from today to get ready to impose their own policies. As I said, I know other states have started to lift some of their restrictions, and we've been re relaxing our restrictions throughout this entire ordeal every chance we could. While I'm convinced that a mask mandate has been the right thing to do, I also respect those who object and believe that this was a step too far in government overreach. Throughout this time, Dr. Harris and I have worked our hearts out in hopes of bringing about a sense of balance to all of this. We've also admitted when we made mistakes, and we've done that a few times as well. The bottom line is we've kept the mask mandate in place for more than a generous period of time because it's helped. And as a result of the people of our state doing their part, we have seen dramatic results and real progress being made. Before Dr. Harris comes up, let me give you a brief update on a few additional changes that are also in the health order. One of the most vulnerable groups are senior citizens with additional burdens of dealing with restrictions on many of their gatherings. While this has been out of an abundance of caution, an unintended consequence has created loneliness, depression, and in some cases, mental and physical decline. So moving forward, outdoor programs will soon be allowed at senior centers with new safety guidelines that the centers will need to follow. It's also about time for parents to start finalizing plans for their kids to go to summer camps. Therefore, effective tomorrow, summer camps will be able to resume operations this year. And I don't know who's gonna be more excited about that, the campers or the parents. We're also going to lift restrictions on seating limits at restaurants. Another small but important step toward returning to whatever normal will soon be. And finally, we are raising the maximum number of visitors from one to two caregivers to accompany a loved one during their stay at a hospital or nursing home. Let me be clear. All of our hospitals and nursing homes need to update their visitation policies to accommodate this change. And as we continue practicing personal responsibility and move forward in easing restrictions, I wanna once again urge patience of Job as Dr. Harris and his team work around the clock to get more shots in more arms. I'm announce that my notes say that by this weekend we expect to have over one million vaccines to be, have been administered, but Dr. Harris tells me this morning, we've already reached the million milestone. So that's a significant milestone when you consider that the first vaccine arrived in our state less than three short months ago. And even with significant increase in vaccine that is coming to our state, we still do not have enough vaccine for everyone who wants, wants a shot. So please be patient as more vaccine arrives each day and our health professionals get more appointments scheduled each day. One final request. I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me and said, what can I do to help? Well, one big way that you can help, and everyone can do this, is to remember the inspiration of the golden rule. Look out for your friends and neighbors. If you've had your vaccine, think about an elderly friend or relative who might not be as savvy as you are and give them a call to see if you can assist in getting them registered to get their shot. Or if you've got a car and they don't, think about giving them a lift to one of the distribution sites in the area. As Dr. Harris makes his way up to the microphone, I once again want to thank the people of Alabama 
because of your personal responsibility and here our safety protocols, we are finally rounding the corner. Dr. Harris? Thank you very much, Governor. Good morning. Thank you, Governor, for, just for all you're doing to keep our state safe, to keep it open. Um, I really appreciate it very much. Um, thank you all for joining us this morning. Um, we, we do have uh, uh, reason for some optimism, although I do want to start on a little more somber note. I, I think you're aware that this week Alabama passed the, the milestone of 10,000 deaths so far since this uh, response has begun. Um, we have lost uh, more than 10,000 of our friends and family and, and church members and work colleagues, uh, and uh, it's just a reminder of what a, what a tough year we've had in 2020. Uh, you know, by comparison, um, the, the, the previous five years, from going back to 2015, Alabama loses about uh, 51 to 52,000 people a year. That's about the right number, I guess you would say, for a state our size. We've averaged around 52 or 53,000 deaths. This past year in 2020, our, our preliminary numbers now uh, show uh, well over 64,000 deaths, uh, about 64,400 deaths, so at least 11,000 excess deaths above what we would ordinarily expect in the past year. And remember, our, our worst days, uh, individual days for deaths, weren't even in 2020. They were in January of this year, so it really has been a difficult year, I know, for everyone. That said, uh, we do see uh, some bright spots finally. Our hospitalization numbers are as good as they have looked uh, since very early summer. Uh, the numbers of daily case numbers, the new case numbers are, are continuing to improve. We're very proud of our vaccination numbers. They continue to increase. And, and as the governor mentioned to you, we yesterday uh, gave the, uh, uh, the one millionth shot. We're actually, uh, as of this morning, at one million. 3,396 shots. We, we know of some uh, larger sites that have not submitted shots even, so we, we're even beyond that number and very proud of that. Um, that's a real tribute to our county health departments, to our uh, doctors and pharmacies and hospitals and community health centers, uh, all, all the folks in Alabama who are pulling together uh, to uh, vaccinate uh, our, our fellow citizens. Uh, we uh, have now more than 1,200 providers who are enrolled in the program. Still the majority of them have not been able to get vaccine because we just haven't had enough. Uh, but we have learned that this coming week we, we will actually have more than 100,000 first doses for the first time. That's Moderna and Pfizer. That will be a new high for us coming into the state. In addition to that, we have about 40,000 doses of the, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine or sometimes called the Janssen vaccine. Janssen makes the vaccine and is owned by Johnson & Johnson. Uh, the Janssen vaccine uh, is, uh, is shipping this week. We'll have providers hopefully giving that uh, in the next day or so. Um, we, we do know that that's a one-time shipment. We've been told that we will not get any, any additional Janssen vaccine for the next three weeks uh, because there was just a small stockpile that all states are getting this week, uh, but there won't be additional uh, uh, probably for the rest of the month of March. Nevertheless, that, that'll still represent a new high in total doses for us. Uh, our uh, uh, large clinic sites that we had set up around the state uh, last month are given second dose uh, clinics this week. And the, the Pfizer sites, the Moderna sites, will be doing their second shot uh, clinics uh, this coming week as well. I wanted to take one minute just to mention vaccine equity. We, we've gotten many questions about uh, how we're distributing the vaccine and whether we're doing it fairly. Um, as you know, all across the country, it, it is African Americans in our state uh, who, uh, in our country, who are most at risk for uh, dying from this disease. And so, in many cases, uh, those are communities that lack access. They don't have the ability to obtain vaccine easily. Um, not a new problem with, with COVID, but a longstanding problem. So. We uh, are working very hard to make sure that, that those communities have access. Um, like most states, we are using a, a federal tool that's called Social Vulnerability Index, or SVI. You've probably heard me talk about that before. But that's a way of making sure that our most at-risk communities are prioritized for receiving a vaccine. Um, I, I say that to say that not only does that reflect how we allocate our state vaccine, but we are working now with the retail pharmacies uh, in the federal retail pharmacy program to use SBI as well in terms of where they place vaccine in their stores. We, we've had really good uh, relationships uh, and good conversations the last two weeks with Walmart and CVS. They're continuing to add vaccine in those stores. Uh, Walmart is going to be up to 123 stores and only have about 20 remaining uh, that uh, 
wait, awaiting vaccine. CVS is going to have about 66 stores that are going to have vaccine. And all of these uh, additions have been based on the SVI information that we were able to communicate to them. So we, we greatly appreciate them partnering with us to reach out to the most vulnerable folks in our state. Um, I wanted to mention uh, that we, we do continue to uh, detect some of the, the COVID-19 variants that you read so much about uh, to, to this point so far. Uh, we've only identified the UK variant. We know that the vaccine is effective for that variant, and that's uh, very encouraging to us. There probably are many cases of variants that we've not been able to detect because we do testing for it, but we don't do widespread large-scale testing at this point. So there may be more out there that we haven't detected. But so far, we feel like we're keeping ahead of that because our vaccinations are effective for that. Um, I wanted to make a final note about visitation. Um, I wanted to uh, just uh, re reiterate what the governor said about uh, visitation in hospitals and nursing homes. We very much want people to be reunited with their families and, and think that's very important. Uh, I, I do want to remind you that the nursing homes in particular are under federal regulations about that and when they have outbreaks in their nursing homes or they have a staff member who's infected or, or so on, they do have restrictions imposed on them by the federal government about visitation. So we want everyone to, to be able to visit. We know uh, family members are, are really desperate to see their loved ones uh, and yet please remember to work with your uh, nursing home and your community because they do have those restrictions imposed on them uh, from a from the federal government as well. So that's, uh, that's all the comments that I, I wanted to make, except just to thank everyone who's been part of this effort for so long. We really are getting close to the, to the end. We've got a, a few more months, uh, but, but we're much closer to the end than we've ever been, and I know we're gonna get there soon. Thank you very much. Governor, I'll open this up for a few questions. Yes, sir. Governor, you, you mentioned that April 9th is a firm date to allow the mask order to lapse. April 9th is going to be the last day I'm going to have a mass mandate. After that, it'll be personal responsibility. And Alabamians are smart. They got good common sense. They know what works. And like I say, I'm going to continue to wear my mask when I'm around folks. But after the 9th, uh, we're not having a mass mandate. Yes. Governor, some Republicans have urged you to drop the mandate and follow the suit of Texas. The Senate passed a resolution asking you to drop it, and uh, the Lieutenant Governor also urged you to drop the mandate. What's your response to, to those requests? Well, maybe they don't have access to the same information I have, and we want to be abundantly clear and abundantly safe before we drop the mask mandate. And we, like I said, we've reached the million um, dose that's been administered already this week, even before the weekend, that's good progress. But if we keep it up and get through Easter, I think we'll be in a whole lot better shape. Okay, a couple more questions. Uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Harris, yes, Dr. Harris uh, can, you give us a, can, can you give us your sense of where vaccinations, where you expect vaccinations in the state to stand on April 9th, like how much coverage you would expect by, by that? Yeah, it's a, it's a little difficult to estimate because our supply is increasing. So I would just say conservatively, we, we're, we're striving for about 150,000 uh, shots uh, per week. Uh, we, we feel pretty good about that number most of the time. Uh, somewhere around 25,000 a day is a pretty typical weekday at least. We don't, we don't quite reach that on the weekends. So extending this for, for five weeks would, would get uh, another uh, three quarter of a million shots or so. Um, and because it's a full five week period, some of those are gonna be second shots. Some of those are gonna be people that are fully immunized as well. So uh, our currently eligible group, uh, as you know, is probably around a million and a half people. So if, if we can get to um, somewhere around one and three quarter million shots by the 1st of April, I, I think that's a terrific place to be. How many shots is that in the next five weeks? So, it, so it, it's about 150,000 uh, a week is our goal and we're, we're it, so, I'm trying to do this math in my head, but I think times five weeks, that's about three quarters of a million, so. I could just follow up real quick. Could, could you just explain in layman's terms, like just why you feel comfortable with that level at like, you know, like with, with the mask and it expiring? Yeah, I, I, think, I think overall we're seeing decreasing numbers in most parts of the country and, and there, there's, you know, a lot of potential explanations why, but uh, we, we are striving to reach this herd immunity point at some point, even though we don't know exactly where that is. 
but we know right now about half a million Alabamians have already been infected, uh, and, and certainly many, if not most of them, have some degree of immunity to this disease. We also know that there are many people out there who have been infected that we probably don't know about, who haven't come to medical attention, but there's certainly a large pool of people who also have some immunity. Uh, and then if we're able to, to, vex, to give, you know, 1.6, 1.7 million shots, that's another pool of people who are immune. So I, I feel like uh, taken all together, that'll put us in a good, good position. Yes, sir. They're certainly free to do that. They've got five weeks to develop their policies and <clears throat> put what they want in place. That's perfectly all right. We're just not going to have a state mandate after April 9th. Yes, sir. Uh, Drop your mask. Well, we're going to have a, a, a joint study on uh, the COVID-19 process uh, after we get out of the, uh, from under the mandate to look at just what we could have done better and what we did do good, because God forbid we have another outbreak of COVID, we want to certainly improve on it and make it uh, much better. And I'll be working with the members of the legislature on that. All right, thank you all.